So in this video, we're gonna talk about the basics of the Cottrell equation. The Cottrell equation applies to chronoampiometry experiments or potential step experiments. Chronoampiometry, what we mean by that, remember, is that uh, the voltage is held constant and you're monitoring the current over time. So these are uh, current I versus T experiments capital I or lowercase i shown in this formula. And this e explains for a normal electrode uh, what you expect to happen to the current, okay, over time. So it's a function of time. And we have number of electrons here. That, of course, is the number of electrons transferred. So if we're talking about, um, you know, iron two going to, um, uh, or iron three going to iron, Two, that's going to be a one electron transfer process, right? Uh, if we're talking about tin four going to tin two, that would be a two electron transfer process. So n would be equals to two. This is Faraday's constant, uh, 96485 coulombs per mole. This is the area of your electrode. Um, if we use all these units, uh, we'll use kind of standard units here. That'd be centimeter squared. Concentration, the standard units you're going to have to use are moles per cubic centimeter or which is equal to moles per milliliter. So a little bit of a non-conventional unit, but that's what works to get everything um, canceled out. It's concentration. And then we have diffusion coefficient, which is in uh, units of centimeter squared per second. And we have uh, square root, uh, all divided by square root of pi, constant, um, over T time, which is in seconds. So those are the units. Um, it's a pretty simple equation uh, and where is this coming from, or what is, what is the idea behind this? The idea is that you have a, a normal electrode that's a plane. This is this this works for a planar electrode, so not a spherical shaped electrode or a cylindrical electrode. There's other similar equations that uh, work for this, and it's something that's controlled. It's a redox process that's controlled by diffusion, and so you have to be talking about. Um, redox active species that are in solution. So if you have, let's just say some uh, oxidation, so we'll say R goes to reduced, goes to O oxidized plus uh, electron, right? Just, just keeping this generic. Before you start the experiment, you're gonna have a bunch of R um, all over solution, but what we really care about is what's happening um, right at the electrode surface. So that's T equals zero. And then if we step, if we, we apply a voltage, um, some positive voltage, right? V applied equals one volt, positive one volt. Then we, we assume that's enough voltage here to do some reaction. So we're gonna do this oxidation reaction. And so now we're at time equals, um, I don't know, T1, right? T1 seconds. And now we're gonna make some O, right? but we're still gonna have R up above that O. And we're still applying a voltage. So the whole time we're applying voltage, you know, our voltage pro profile over time, this is a potential step experiment. So our voltage profile over time is constant. We're at one volt the entire experiment. So what is gonna happen here? Well, um, we have R, the concentration of R equals uh, C, whatever we started with, at the beginning of the experiment. And so in the beginning, it's all R. But here, obviously, right at the electrode, at time T1, it's equal to zero. And so we set up a, a concentration gradient. And so what's just going to happen by principles of diffusion is R is going to diffuse towards the electrode, and O is going to diffuse away from the electrode because it has a concentration gradient going the other way. Remember, species odes go from high concentration to low concentration. And over time, what's going to happen is we're going to be converting more and more uh, R into O. But we're kind of going to be, be able to do that at a lower current because we have to wait for some of this R to come in. And so what we say is that our diffusion length, our diffusion layer length, is going to be increasing over time. And our current, the math works out through Fick's law if you derive this, which I can do in another video. Um, it, it, it works out that I is equal, 
actually continuously goes down um, if you assume that you have this growing diffusion uh, layer where over time the concentration of uh, R is basically being depleted from the electrode surface. And so we say our diffusion layer is growing. So what ends up happening is you get a plot of I versus T where I starts off very high and then it slowly, more and more slowly diminishes and it'll keep diminishing, okay? That's what the Cottrell equation uh, uh, predicts. What you can do with this is then you can do a very important plot, which is I over uh, one over, uh, I plot I versus one over square root of T. And if you do that, the Cottrell equation uh, predicts that you should get a uh, straight line because we have um, basically a, a bunch of constants uh, in front of one over square root of of T. Uh, and so at uh, short times, our current is actually predicted to be infinity, um, which we know is impossible. We can't have inf infinite current. But I mean, if you look at this equation, right, uh, when T equals zero, that's what this equation is uh, predicting now. So this is where we're going to get some deviations from this, this, this idealized uh, equation. We'll talk about that. But so if you think about this, right, this is one over T. So this is long times, at the beginning of this long times over here, over here is very short times. So very long times at infinite long times when T is infinity, I should be equal to zero and there's no intercept for this equation. So we should have a straight line going out to um, infinity at time, as t approaches zero, way over here, and as t approaches infinity, very long time, we should get zero current. Eventually, this curve should go down to zero. That's what we're predicting. Uh, what actually happens here is that you just have a kind of regime in the middle that's linear when you apply this. Um, and the reason why, so these are deviations, deviations from linearity. Uh, at let's talk about at short times. So short times, there's two main reasons that you have deviations. The first is capacitive charging. And so when you first apply this potential step, we're talking about very short times here, uh, you have to set up the double layer, okay? Uh, and so you have to set up charge at the interface and that takes some time for everything to rearrange. So you're gonna get some current associated with that capacitive charge and we've talked about in other videos, um, that non-Faraday current. And so that's gonna cause deviations from linearity. The other is just imperfections in the potential step. You can say that in the potential step. It takes some time for any piece of electronic to actually apply a voltage. Um, probably, usually it depends on the instrument, but usually around microseconds. So at really short times, there's gonna be deviation there. What about long term time? Why do you have de deviations? In practice, what usually happens here is this plot comes out and just reaches what we would call the fusion limited current. So it doesn't reach zero. Instead, it, it reaches what we call diffusion limited current, or DLC. Um, and why is that? Well, your diffusion layer is getting very long. And so really what's happening here is you're getting confection effects. Or we can say disruption of the diffusion layer. So when your diffusion layer is very, very long, you just have turbulence in your electrode, okay? And so when this gets several hundreds of microns usually, you have some convective effects due to you know, temperature fluctuations in the liquid that are sweeping um, new species in and exchanging the bulk with the diffusion layer. Remember this diffusion layer is built up by the action on the, the electrode. It's a deviation 
from what's happening in bulk. And so if the bulk can mix with the diffusion layer, well, you destroy the diffusion layer, um, and then the equation doesn't uh, hold anymore. So if now you're dealing with convective effects, now you have this competition where the convective effects are basically replenishing the bulk. And so your net diffusion layer has sort of reached a steady state in terms of its length. And that's where you have a true diffusion limited current and you don't go to zero like the control equation um, predicts. Okay, so that's the main reason that this happens. Now, if you rotate or stir your uh, electrolyte, you will have a shorter diffusion layer, right? Um, because you're purposefully disrupting it. If you do this under very careful conditions, you could have a very big diffusion layer. One of the most important applications of the Cottrell equation is determining uh, these different constants, particularly the diffusion constant. It's probably the easiest way to measure the diffusion constant in electrochemistry, most straightforward way. And what you do there is you take the uh, linear fit that you get somewhere in the middle, you have to take a best linear fit. Um, and there's a little bit of a judgment call, right? You know, you have to figure out where is the best air area to take a linear fit, there's guides on how to do this. Um, but when you do that linear fit, you're gonna get the slope of this line equaling to this constant, right? All the constants. And once you know that, assuming you know N and you know the area of the electrode and the concentration of your redox species that you started with, you can then solve for D. And that's a very good way to figure out the diffusion coefficient.